Okay, thanks. Jennifer, can you hear me? All right. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, if you can hear me, uh, send a quick... Irvin, we can't hear you. Can't hear me? Mm -mm. At all. My check. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can. okay, Todd can hear me too. I might've been a little off of the mic. Thank you all. Um, sorry, we're a little late. We have uh, some technical difficulties. Uh, we're getting it started. I'm here in about two minutes. So All right, can everyone see the screen as well? Todd, you're good? I'm good. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, thank you all for joining again. I'm sorry, I'm clicking like crazy. Um, we're gonna give everyone maybe another minute or so to jump on, and then we're gonna get this thing rolling. We have 14, about 18 total in here. Yeah. Good number, good number. A great number, yeah. All right, again, one more minute, then we're going to get started for everybody. All right, and that one minute is up. So uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first of many virtual trainings. We are back and happy to bring the virtual trainings back to you. They have come with high demand. Um, so over the next few months, I think we have training scheduled to February. So we're definitely going to send that information out to you all. I think recently you only received the September uh, trainings that we had scheduled. Um, so look at here in the next couple of weeks, and I will be sending out the next couple of trainings um, all the way until February that we'll be hosting. So please keep an eye out for that. Um, before we get started, uh, definitely if you have any questions or questions at all, please put them into the chat box and we will make sure that we get, get to them. I see a lot of people already texted when I asked if you could hear me. Um, if Yeah, I see a lot of people already texted already. And um, so please use that chat box for any questions um, at all, because we definitely want these trainings to be as beneficial for you all. So no question, there's no dumb questions at all. So please ask away. Um, also, 
Another thing, if I can ask everyone to please mute your mics, um, that way we can make sure everyone could hear Todd um, as he's speaking um, throughout the throughout the training. So to jump into it, I uh, first want to introduce Todd Garrett. Um, as you can see, his email address is right there. So ask him any questions at all that you that you have to ask, that you maybe can't ask during this call or what have you. But uh, Todd has been coaching for Special Olympics for 30 years. Um, he is the 2022 USA Games Team Arkansas Head Unified Softball Coach. That was a lot just now. Huh? Uh, but also a little background on Todd. He is a certified softball umpire in the USS, USSSA, the ASA and USA softball. So he definitely knows his softball for sure. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Todd, and the floor is all yours, Todd. Thank you, Ervin. Hi, Jennifer. How are you, Todd? Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending this. And uh, uh, we're going to try to make this brief as possible, that's for sure. But we're going to get into some in-depth, uh, not only softball rules, but uh, we're going to get into some in-depth uh, uh, things that we just need to cover on sportsmanship and everything else with softball. So uh, we'll get started. Our sports season, it's May through November. The state events and unified sports fall games will be coming up November 20th, and that's unified only. And that will be at UCA, right, Irving? And then uh, the summer games are traditional only, and that always happens at Searcy, uh, most time in May. So uh, that's the two events most time for softball. And our uh, team competition uh, slow pitch is unified team uh, competition, which that will be uh, the athletes and partners playing together. And then uh, we have an individual skills contest also for the state. Uh, our uniforms always consist of a jersey, uh, either shorts. Uh, you can wear stockings. I think most times stockings is about out of uh, – uh, date now. Uh, most people do not wear these stockings and uh, also these sports shoes. All team members must have identical uniforms in the same color and design. Uh, we like for that to look good because uh, you look good. I think uh, if you look the part, you play the part sometimes and also uh, sense pride through your athletes and also your partner. So try to dress at least the tops uh, all in sequence if you can and either they can wear shorts or bottoms uh, such as uh, uh, baseball bottoms and the caps visor headbands are optional for players uh, they can be mixed now y'all they can be uh, but if they are one type is worn they must all be the same uh, cutter so uh, if you got uh, say area two and you got area two green cap. Let's try to keep the visor green with area two and so forth and so on. Uh, this is an important one for me and everything else. Athletic bottoms should be worn such as shorter baseball type pants. Absolutely, as you can see in red, no jeans or cut off jean shorts at all. Um, that's a pet peeve of mine. I think it's Irving, Jennifer's, everybody else's. It's just a pet peeve. So no jeans or cutoff jeans are allowed at all. The shoes is very important also. Uh, we have had a partner to every once in a while show up in the cleat, uh, in the metal cleat spikes, as you can tell below. But anything that rubber soles, such as athletic shoe or rubber, turf is fine. Uh, rubber cleats are fine. They can be wore but uh, your metal spots are not allowed. Uh, matter of fact, we will not let you play in that, and it could be an ejection if you are caught wearing them. And there's an example with the red uh, circle around the red spots. Uh, this is an example below here of kind of not what to wear in a softball game, if you don't mind, uh, kind of like khakis, uh, just old cut off shirt, headband, everything else. That's a no, that's a no, 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 no. Uh, no bandanas, do rags, any kind of necklace that could get pulled off, uh, earrings, anything like that. Denim, once again, 
may not be worn during the game or practice. Headwear for religious or medical reasons are acceptable, but you must bring that to our attention before the game uh, so we can let the umpires know that, hey, this is the medical or religious symbol and he is and he can wear this. OK, so that's very important. Also, guys, that uh, we the bulky watches is they know anything like that. Weird protect their athletes and partners, but weird mostly protect the athletes. So make sure they pull off the bulky watches or earrings or anything else that may get caught or could cut someone. Okay, we're not going to read all this. Uh, I'm just going to tell you most time our ball regu uh, regulations are the 12 inch balls. That's the bigger men's balls that we play with. Uh, the weight of the balls most times very consistent. Uh, I have, that I know of, I have never had to weigh a softball because they come from all factories and they're always in between six and a fourth ounce to seven ounces. And the balls are always right at 12 inches. They have to be a red stitch. Okay, the core of the softball means a lot, which is compression of 300 or less in the core. Uh, it says 52 or under. Uh, most time it's gonna be a 48 core now, a 48 core what we can buy. Uh, or below, okay? Um, so the balls, and we always try to go the highlight yellow uh, balls now, so they're more visible seen uh, in the game. And that's for safety for not only our athletes, but everyone involved in that. And that's include the umpires, uh, the coaches that's on the bases and everything else. So uh, with that being said, batting, batting helmets are required. Uh, once again, we're safety. Uh, a partner may come up and say, man, I'm not wearing that helmet. You will wear that helmet or you will not play, okay? And this is a national uh, uh, rule uh, across the board for Special Olympics. Uh, the catcher must wear a face mask at all times um, with a helmet. So we like for the catcher to wear a helmet and the face mask connected that covers the whole head and the face. Uh, chest protectors, they're optional and a throat guard, if you know. Uh, throat guard most times comes with your helmet now. It's a little metal guard that comes down uh, just below the face mask and it helps keep the throat from getting hit and that's, that's very important. Uh, most of the time in our games, a chest protector is not worn. Um, it's up to your preference on that. If you want to protect your athlete uh, just a little bit more, that's fine too. But we do recommend that if that's what the case is. Okay, the official bats. I'm just going to get in real quick into this. It gets pretty lengthy into the bats. Uh, you will never have a softball bat longer than 34 inches guys no matter where you buy your softball bats from you will never get a softball bat longer than 34 inches the reason that being is a longer softball bat is going to generate more power off the bat with the ball and it could uh really hurt someone the bats are so hot these days anyway that we don't need that extra length to that uh, the studies show over and over and over again that a longer bat uh, can do a lot more severe damage to one person uh, being hit by a ball off a bat than a 34-inch bat. So uh, it shall be one-piece construction. Uh, you, do, you do have some bats at multiple pieces, but they cannot, y'all. They, they will not come apart. Uh, in that uh, if the bat is interchangeable components, it must meet the fodder criteria, which once again, 34 inch bats, uh, it will not exceed a 38 ounce ever in weight, a bat will not. And most of your bats will go down to 24 to 26 ounce. Uh, that will be for the uh, females playing the game. Uh, most of the time you won't get under 24 
very seldom uh, when I was looking for bats uh, this year for our Team USA uh, team, uh, for Team Arkansas, I had trouble finding even 24 ounce. I do not recommend a 24 ounce. Uh, that's just very light. A 26 ounce most time will do the job for us guys on that. Uh, hardwood, don't recommend it, but you can if you want to. If you're a whole traditionalist, that's fine too. Uh, metal bat, um, not near as good as your uh, uh, composite bats now. A bamboo bat, I can't say I've ever seen a, cam a bamboo bat. Plastic graphite, carbine, all these bats I do not recommend. Uh, only uh, I recommend the composite bats now. Uh, bats not cheap, y'all. If you're gonna go out and get a good bat, it's gonna cost you around three to four to five hundred dollars. Uh, that's just all there is to it. National government body standards uh, comes out with this, and plus standard commissions also. Uh, ICF, uh, I mean I, ISF uh, Equipment Standards Commission and the National Governing Bodies uh, governs the bats and they're governed very close now. Here's just some examples of your bats. Every one of them, as you see under the U-trip, uh, down at the very bottom of the black bat, it's got a 1.20. That's the standard of the compression off the bat. Uh, most of your bats cannot have more than 1.20 compression off the bat. Uh, they came out with that around 2000, I believe it was. Uh, the NSA, ASA followed shortly after you trip made that a standard. Uh, USA softball, ISA, ISF, all these uh, now you have these stamps on the bats, guys. Uh, it's very important to have the stamps when you're looking for a bat. If you do go to a competition, um, like state games or whatever else, and you got certified umpires, they will look for them bats. If they do not have them stamps on them bats, they will eject the bats. Uh, they will set it outside the dugout and you cannot be playing with it. If you are caught playing with it, it will be automatic ejection for the coach. Okay, your team size. Um, it says maximum 15 players. That's for uh, USA games, uh, 11 to 15 players. Uh, I do not discourage anyone from having 17, 18 players. It's hard to uh, get that many into a softball game in the time limit we have. But uh, if you get above, let's say, 2021, 20, 22, 23 players. Uh, let's go ahead and fill out two teams, guys. You can have an upper and a lower team or two middle teams or whatever it may be, but let's encourage all of our players to um, uh, unified athletes and athletes to uh, and partners to play with our athletes. And two teams is better than one, and not everybody has to sit down on the bench all the time and, and just make any in or two. Um, it says you may register three athletes and alternates. A team may start a game with 10 players. That is correct. Uh, and if an injury or ejection occurs, they may finish with nine. That is not all the way correct. It kind of contradicts yourself. If someone is ejected, and we will see this in a minute, uh, that you have to have someone feel that spot if you're playing 10 or nine players. If you do not have someone filling that 10th spot in the outfield, it is automatic out. If you have only eight players, if you only play nine and you only have eight and you get one ejected and you go down eight, it is an automatic forfeit in the game if they get ejected. Now being hurt, we're gonna see in a minute, being hurt and we're gonna go over this, but if you get hurt, we can go down on numbers, but we cannot if someone gets ejected. And uh, uh, games, yes, that is right. Games may be begin with nine players. Uh, okay, so you can begin a game with nine players. Okay, Irv. Gotcha. And uh, just to backtrack for a second, Todd, um, Shauna Johnson said new compression for USS 
SA is 240. So will you keep that standard or will you use the old standard? Uh, Shauna, we go strictly by Special Olympics rules. So as of now, we're still keeping that 300 um, that compression correct. right now. So uh, definitely, yeah. we, definitely we go by the rules and we don't try, try not to stray from the rules and, at all. And Irvin, if I may add this, uh, the U-trip, I wish I hadn't even really brought it up. U-trip has nothing to do with uh, Team USA games or even uh, Special Olympics. And, oh, we're standard by ASA and USA and ISA softball. So U-trip has nothing to do with us. So kind of just ignore that. But I was just going the number of the compression on the bat and everything else from 1.20. So. And here's a short little clip of uh, some of uh, uh, kind of lighten up the move of rejection, guys. So, Okay, Herb, that's good. Now that's example, really what not to do by umpire and a manager. If you get that far gone uh, with a uh, uh, softball um, game for, uni for either unified or traditional uh, softball as a manager, uh, we got to talk afterwards, that's for sure. Uh, the umpire approached him just as much. He kept on going forward towards uh, the manager. And uh, plus, don't forget, we don't get paid anything, and they get paid a lot of money. So we don't got to worry about that. Right, Irv? Everyone okay, yeah. still gets fined, though. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. Everyone's going to get a hefty fine on that one. Trust me on that. <laughs> a game will consist of seven innings, Okay. A time limit of one hour and five minutes will be utilized for all games. No new inning can begin after this limit. A game will be deemed com complete if a team has a 15-run lead after four innings or 12 runs after five innings, okay? So um, <clears throat> that's a little bit different than some leads and everything else, but it's 15 after four and 12 after five in case of bad weather comes in, uh, two complete innings shall cons be considered a complete game. A foul ball following two strikes is an out. So if you come up to the plate, uh, you have two strikes on you, and you foul the next one off, you will be out. It will be an automatic out, unlike some, uh, unlike you trips and some other ones, but don't forget, Ours on ASA and USA softball is the third foul and you are out. Uh, the batting order cannot change except for the following situations. The batter is out when playing shorthanded, and it is and it is the drop player's position in the batting order. So if someone, like I said, if someone got hurt, and you start out with 10, someone got hurt, you only play nine. Say if the eighth place iter came up, that would be an automatic out in the order, y'all. So that would uh, be that case. An athlete is ejected. It will be considered an out when he or she comes to bat or rides. Once again, we'll have to look at that, Irving, but that's never been the case, and I need to in-depth on that a lot more. Uh, let me let me do some checking and I'll get back to you and you can send out a statement to everyone 
but I have never uh, seen this. If someone's ejected, uh, the the batter when they come up in the lineups out, but we need to look at that and see that. Only if no substitutions is available, but if you do have substitution, put them in. A new athlete may be added to the bottom of the order at any time. Yes, that is the case for state, but USA Games, no, that is not the case. Sliding is allowed, but not recommended. Uh, no assisted device allowed during team play. Here's some examples of sliding. Uh, we should teach our athletes never to slide head first, guys. Uh, Pete Rose made this really, really famous back in the 70s, but uh, we should never teach athlete, and we should always discourage athlete from sliding head first. So many things can happen, uh, breaking fingers, uh, broken wrists. I've seen about all of it. Uh, let's do not encourage them to slide head first. And as you see Tony Gwynn on the right-hand side, he's sliding feet first. That's the way we should be teaching our athletes to slide. And remember, try not to try to always teach your guys to run through first base. Do not have them slide into first base. It's a proven, proven over and over again that all it does is slow you down. So have them run through first base. That's just a little side tip right there. And here's two more examples of how it can happen here. It cannot happen. Um, Baez on the left. Uh, this is the time he broke one of his fingers, I believe. Uh, he was injured, sliding head first. And then uh, pretty good slides here. So, Irvin, Jennifer, we want to do these quick videos right quick. As you see, it can be bad on both the offensive and defensive player in that case right there. So that's not a great example of how to slide there and everything else. He hurt his nose and then broke some fingers, I believe. And Trey Turner on here, this is a pretty smooth slide. This just happened the other night. So I thought it was one of the best slides I've seen in a while. Okay, I thought it was going to roll again. That's okay, Jennifer. So remember, guys, uh, it's very important that we teach our athletes to do these little things. That means a lot to us as a coach and their parents also knowing they're uh, safe and well taken care of because softball is not, not always a no contact sport, trust me. I played it long enough and I know and uh, uh, even sliding feet first, you can get hurt, but it's less likely that you can get a major, major injury uh, unlike sliding head first. Uh, we'll continue on here. There would be no more than two coaches for each team to give words or signals. Uh, there's very few signals we give in softball, that's for sure, of assistance and direction to members of their team while at bat. Uh, one should be uh, stationed near first base and the other near third base. We'll get a first base coach and third base coach. Each coach must remain in their box. Uh, sorry, Ty, real fast. Uh, Desiree yeah. Brown asks, how many softball teams have we had in previous years? Um, Desiree, per, um, per state level events, we had close to 20 softball teams. Um, keep in mind, those were different levels, uh, different division levels, of course. Um, and also, Caleb asks, Todd, can a player who is not in the game be a base coach? 
Yes and no. Yes, they can. Uh, I, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really pretty cool with that most of the time, and I think Irving uh, would be too. Uh, let's try to make sure the base coach knows what they're doing. Uh, that just to assist our athletes more than anything else. But yes, I, I'm okay with that. Sure, if you don't have enough coaches, Caleb, I'm I'm more than cool with that. Yeah. Um, and the next one, um, this is pretty important uh, right here. As you see, a white first base and a orange first base. If a play is made at first base on any batted ball, any batter or runner touches only the fair portion, which is the white base, y'all. Uh, and if the defense appeals, if they appeal to play, uh, prior to the next batter coming up the bat, that runner will be out. Let's teach our athletes, and I'm hoping everyone has a has a safe bag at first base. Most of your um, venues now that we go to will have the orange and white uh, safety bag. Uh, that's just for all around safety, uh, mostly for your rep record leads and everything else. So let's uh, try to teach our athletes and also partners that they have to touch the orange part, orange part of the bag. After the runner passes first base, they may return to either portion of the double base and may stand on either portion for the beginning of ever play coming up. So once you are declared safe, you can either stand on the orange or white. I recommend to stand on the white, but there always is a but. The but is, I'm not trying to get over your heads, but if you're in fair territory and the ball is hit and it hits the runner, he's out. But if he's on the orange bag, it is in foul territory and it hits him, he will be okay and he will get to continue to run the bases. All right, real fast, hi, back to the chat. Uh, Caleb was asking that question from the viewpoint of having a unified partner. Um, so I think that kind of answered yeah. his question. That, that's more than fine, yes, yes. Uh, Rihanna Weber uh, said, I have three deaf athletes, so a lot of signals going on there. <laughs> um, Understand, yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fine. And everything else, and what she may want to do on that, Irving, is just let the umpire know which one is going to be the main uh, signal giver on that would it be the third base or first base coach so they won't get so confused and everything else and umpire can be assistance to that also um, Ashley McAllister said my husband is going with me to help be a partner if need and coach um, I will be doing the coaching but is it okay if for him to help uh, Desiree Brown said, why is there a two-color base? Uh, first time to be doing this. Sorry, not a dumb question at all, Desiree, but uh, no. Todd, she's asking why um, Why is there a two-color base? Okay, Jennifer, I don't know if you can do, but can you put your arrow off your, the orange portion? That is your safety uh, bag, what we call a safety bag. We encourage the runners running to first to hit step on the orange bag and run through the bag, and that way they will be uh, – it's for all safety. If you've got to go to the white part of the bag, it's say if there's only a white part of the bag, there's more of a chance that the first baseman, the, defend, the defender, the first base, and the offense, the guy just got to be batting, hitting the white bag, say it's a more chance of getting injured. So it's all, all a safety bag, okay? So once they hit the orange bag – and they're declared safe, they can go stand on the white bag now and get ready to run the second and third base and so on and so forth, okay? So it's not a dumb question at all. It's just all for safety for our defense and our offense playing the game. And trust me, we need a lot of safety measures on that. And um, Shauna Johnson said, we have several connections with that little companies that sell bats and uniforms so they will look into getting sponsors i love it i love it good 
back to you, Tad. Okay. Uh, Tiebreaker, extra innings. Uh, this is something most of us is not, uh, when I was reading over this international rule, most of us traditionalists in American baseball uh, probably do not like this rule, but starting with the top of the eighth inning, or only first inning after the time limit, which say if we're sits in the time limit, that iron five minute runs out, uh, we got to go extra innings, game tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Thereafter, the offensive team shall begin its turn at bat with a player who is scheduled to bat. And the last one, uh, listen to me, the last one that made the out in the sixth inning, the last batter made the out in the sixth inning will take second base, will be placed on second base. That's an international rule. The player who is running can be substituted according to substitution rules. So say if John come up, bottom of the sits, made the last out, we're going to the seventh inning times run out. And if you got Hank over here that you want to take John's place, let's say, at second base, he can run faster. You can do that. You can substitute him in, okay? So kind of gets tricky there. But whoever made your last out at the bottom of the inning, or it'd be your top inning because you're coming up the bat next, uh, you have to start out with the person making the last out at the top of the sixth or top of the seventh going into the eighth inning. I know that's confusing, but I do not like it. Probably just like anybody else doesn't. But uh, it's, a, it's a rule that we got to go by, and that's a rule that we do. And so, um, if you got any questions on that, do not hesitate. It's no dumb questions on that. And I'll try to walk you through it, that's for sure. Uh, the pitching plate will be set at a minimum of 40 feet and a maximum of 50, 50 feet from home plate. Okay, so we kind of adjust there for the competition levels and everything else for unified competition at plate may be moved back to 55 feet. And that's for safety purposes only, of course, and everything else. But uh, uh, most time it's set at uh, 50 feet and stays there most of the time. And most time we will, uh, most time the pitcher, let's say, can scoot up to encourage athlete to hit the ball, and so they can see the ball better. Uh, the pitch starts when the pitcher makes any motion that is part of his or her windup after the required stop. So you got to come to a pause for you to go into uh, pitching a slow pitch softball. You kind of present the ball as a, uh, as a courtesy, and then you start to wind up, wind up and you stop and the pause for a second, then you go into pitching. The pitcher must deliver the ball towards home plate on the first forward swing of the pitching arm past the hip and underhanded motion. The pivot foot must remain in contact with the pitcher's mound or plate until the pitch ball leaves the hand. So he has to be in contact either front, back, side, or whatever of the white pitching plate on the mound uh, when the ball leaves the hand. The ball must be delivered at a arch at least six foot and no more than 10 foot, okay? For your older coaches, they have dropped that two feet in the recent years. So it's six to 10 now, not six to 12. So, and that's from the ground to release of the ball. Uh, ten players, uh, pitcher F1, catcher F2, first baseman F3, second baseman F4, so on and so forth. As you can read that, I'm not going to go through all them. Um, if you've been around the game a while, you know that. Uh, you know it by heart. Uh, F10 will be your what we used to call rover or left center, right center, whatever you want to call him. Uh, it's the two positions in there and everything else. I have no problem, and most of your uh, scorekeepers will not have a problem if you put uh, pitcher, a P, C for a catcher, uh, one B, 
2B, so on and so forth. We got no problem with that, that's for sure, if you want to do it that way. The batting order must show the first and last name, uniform number and position on the lineup card and must be delivered before the game by the manager or captain to the scorekeeper at the field. Uh, most time it will be to the scorekeeper and also most time you will bring one to the umpire also so he can make his changes on that too. And unified, the lineup card shall present, uh, shall be designed as an A for athletes and uh, P for partner next to that player's information. Uh, the batter must have both feet completely with, within these batter bots prior to start of the pitch. They may touch the lines, but they have to be in, and the lines are considered in, but no part of the foot may be outside the lines prior to the pitch, or it will be considered no pitch. Here's an example of a lineup card. Uh, some of my favorite players of all time, everything else. As you see, you got the numbers, uh, you got the batting orders, uh, F sets, shortstop, F four, second base, F eight, center field, going down, sort down, down, and you see that. But I have no problem on the right hand side of position if you put in pitcher, catcher, first base, one uh, B, one two, SS for shortstop. I have no trouble with that at all. That's for sure. And then, Jennifer, you screw up some. I think you can see our substitution, our subs at the bottom of that card right there. And I don't know if it shows it up all the way or not, but you get kind of ideal about that. And that's, you know, that's fine. But that uh, Jim Edmonds, Trevor Hoffman, all of them will be your uh, substitutes and everything else. And you just fill them in. And you have another spot underneath their name, say like Ted Williams. If you go back to that, Jennifer, right quick. And if you see Ted Williams, number nine, right there, you have another blank where Frank Thomas is. You have an empty blank right there below his, and you're feeling Jim Edmonds for him. And then you have Frank Thomas and another blank, and so on and so forth now. Um, two questions popped in there. Um, Asha McAllister asked, when this is over, will you send us a slide so we can copy off? Definitely will. Um, Caleb asked, are LC and RC okay for left center and right center? I'm just used to baseball position. Yes, absolutely. You know, you're going to have a 10 out there, so you can do a left center, right center, left field, and right field, RF, LF, all them and everything else, that's more than fine, you bet. And Desiree, I see you said you have so much to learn. Uh, yeah and no, I mean, it's a pretty simple game. Uh, sorry, Irvin, I stole a little bit of your thunder there right quick, but it's a pretty easy game to learn. Uh, anytime you need help, you can reach out to Irving and he'll get over to me and I can come to your place and help you out, uh, whether it be, I don't like stealing anybody's thunder on coaching wise, but I'll give you pointers. I don't know where you live at, but I gladly uh, travel and do that because I just love the game. So I'll sure help teach you that. Oh, Greenbrier. Oh, well, you're just right next to me. So no big deal there. Is that right? Uh, okay, a ball is called by the umpire for illegal pitch. We're not going to get in depth in this, y'all. We're not going to go very far into this because we can go pretty far into this, and I'm just not going to do it. Uh, a ball is called by the umpire for a legal pitch ball that does not enter the strike zone, uh, touches the ground before reaching home plate, uh, touches home plate at which the batter does not swing. That's where we're going to leave that at that. Okay, guys, we're not going to go in depth on this. Um, Building the infield fly rule. Once again, I'm not going very far into this. Um, the infield fly rule will be in effect when there are less than two, two outs and there are runners on first and second base 
are even loaded, okay? The umpire will announce infield fly rule is in effect. He'll say infield fly, the batter's out. Uh, when one of the above conditions exists and the batter hits a pop fly in the infield. Now, we're just not going in depth in that, Irving, because I could go far in depth into that and I'm not going to do it. And I will say this, do not get mad if an umpire if you have a partner playing shortstop and third, let's say you're at Boy Cal, and a ball has popped up and it's shallow uh, left field, the shortstop goes out and makes a play on it and he calls an infield fly. It's any routine play that an umpire discretions that the infield can make, and that is to protect. That is always to protect the runner from getting doubled up. Okay, do not forget that. Uh, and just real fast, something I didn't say at the beginning. Um, with the virtual trainings, of course, we're shooting for like uh, within an hour. Well, about an hour each training. Um, of course, you all know that means we can't go over every single aspect of a sport. So we definitely encourage you to look into the rules, uh, reach out to other coaches and things of that nature, just to get that advanced training, I should say, for lack of a better term. Um, two questions, Todd. Uh, please clarify one thing. No infield fly rule if there are no base runners, correct? That is correct. Okay. And, and there's no infield fly rule, guys, if there's two outs or more. Or, I mean, two outs, okay, guys? Because the third out would just knock it out. But like I said, one out or below, um, infield fly because you're protecting your runners from getting doubled up because a lot of smart players could let that ball drop and they can get a double play. And uh, Desiree said, so softball is only a unified game. Um, just to answer that real fast, Desiree, um, for Arkansas, we offer traditional and unified, but most of our teams lean to unified uh, competition. That's why that's why we talk about unified uh, softball a lot, because most of our teams are unified. Uh, but we do have um, a few traditional teams around the state that compete uh, more on a local level. But as far as like state competitions, uh, unified has been what everyone has been um, asking for, creating teams towards, I should say. And it's happening to unified. Okay, my favorite. Uh, their the roster shall contain a uh, proportion number of athletes and partners. Uh, with that being said, right quick, Irving, we're just going to uh, – like my unified uh, team, Arkansas team, I have – I have nine and – I have nine and six, I believe. I have nine athletes and six. So you can have any kind of number on that. It don't have to be eight and seven or whatever for your 15. It can be, you know, whatever you want to be on that really truly. But I try to take more athletes uh, than uh, partners this year just because uh, I rewarded some athletes for being with me a while, and this may be their last time going. Uh, during competition, your lineup shall never see five traditional athletes and five partners. So you got to have five and five on the field at all times. Okay. And this is why we make it, uh, it's, it's a fun game. Now I have let some uh, uh, teams play with six uh, traditional athletes or your athletes and, and you know, uh, four partners. I have done that, and that's fine to some degree. The batting order shall alternate athlete and partner or partner athlete. It doesn't make a difference which way you bat them in the order, but it's got to be an athlete, partner, athlete, partner, partner, athlete, partner, athlete. Position requirements are as follows. Two athletes and two partners in both the infield and outfield at either position or catcher. So if you have a if you have a pitcher that's an athlete, you have to have a catcher that is a partner or vice versa, okay? So um, pretty easy to explain on that. Uh, no matter what the batting order, athlete, partner, partner, athlete, and you got to have two in every position 
uh, to an infield, to an outfield, either a pitcher or a catcher athlete partner role. A limit of over defense home runs will be used in unified division. The following uh, limitations are per team and per game as a two. We can always accede that to some water if we are on a bigger field, a 300 foot fence, we may allow as many as you can get. Uh, and then sometimes if you're on a 230, 240 uh, fence, a small fence, we are going to just allow two home runs. And uh, for any access, the ball is dead, the batter is out, and no runner can advance. Um, let's play that video, Jennifer, if you mind. Uh, can we get the volume on that? Because this is a good one, Jennifer. And we may not can. Yeah, And that's okay, but that's an older video. I think the volume does it better than anything else. That's an older video of Mark McGuire and Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox. And that's just for home run, trying to make it entertaining for y'all a little bit. Uh, if y'all get a chance, go in and watch that video, Chick Dig the Long Ball. It's really a great uh, commercial. Okay, let's dive into sportsmanship rules. And you can find this, and I found this right off our uh, uh, Team USA sports rules for, by the governor body of uh, USA Olympics, uh, Special Olympics Committee. A uh, disqualified, disqualified player is prohibited from playing, but can remain in the team area or serve as a coach. OK, if someone gets ejected, do not let them coach. Just make them sit over there on the bench and calm them down, talk to them and everything else. OK, guys, do not let them coach. Do not reward that behavior. Uh, effect, if found playing, the game is a forfeit after they have been ejected. Uh, 14A2, an ejected adult unified partner must leave the grounds and have no contact with the umpire or anyone else in that game. The game is a forfeit if they are seen on your bench and not outside in the parking lot. Okay, guys, uh, we should have no unified partner ever getting ejected. It's not for them, it's for our athletes and our athletes only. 14A3, any arguing of only a judgment call of balls and strikes or judgment calls for plays in the field will constitute a team warning. That umpire is a little bit nicer than I am on that. Uh, don't do not argue balls and balls and strikes. Just you, if you want to do this, go up and ask them, say, hey, where's the ball missing at? Is it too high? Is it coming in too low? What's it doing outside? Whatever, but do not go up arguing that. Any repeated offense of this shall result in the ejection of that team member. If you're going to question anything, it should be the coaches. Never should be any type of unified or athlete player. 14A4, if a player is disqualified, a team can play shorthanded. However, if a player is ejected and a team does not have enough players, play cannot continue. This is what I was talking about. The effect of that, the game is a forfeit. So if someone gets ejected, would it be an athlete or partner? You do not have a sub to put in for them that game now is a forfeited game. And that's a punishment that should be there, in my opinion, yes. All right. Irvin, and, uh, you got anything on that? I mean, we just 
that's something we all need to practice, right, Irving? Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I now apologize. I was looking at the chats, making sure I stayed on top of those. Um, that's fine. No, that's no real, big deal. Real fast, uh, Desiree, I believe the first one was a question. Um, if someone is already on a softball team, they cannot play in unified. Um, I'm going to answer that in two parts. Um, if you're talking Special Olympics, meaning – they're going to an event and playing on two teams. Uh, that's a no due to scheduling. But if you're talking about a whether you have an, a unified partner on a high school team or something along those lines, that is totally fine with us. Um, meaning Special Olympics, they can play. Um, unified sports is for athletes with and without intellectual disabilities. Uh, it might be another um, issue on the, their coaches or their high school coaches perspective. So that's an issue that we really don't tackle. But as far as them playing Special Olympics, um, that's totally fine. But also one thing that we definitely look into is um, um, partners taking over the game. Um, we try to limit that as much as possible. So if you have an athlete that's playing second base and they're running to the home plate to try to get her out. Uh, that's something we try to limit. So um, that's the only issue there, but other than that, they can definitely play. Uh, can males and females be on one team? Yes, they can. Um, with that, if um, there are males and females, most likely they will play in the male division. Um, but most of the time, most of our teams have both males and females. So we usually don't really run into that problem. Um, as far as divisioning goes. And yep, I think that's it right there, Todd. Okay. And real quick here, guys, uh, I know we're running out of time here, but uh, uh, this is our new assessment sheets that we, that, uh, uh, that they have sent out for Team USA Softball for us to assess. Uh, we was going to do it last week and I was going to see how it went, but this is a very uh, easy way. I like this new assessment sheet. Uh, it gives you the basics of level one, level two, and level three. Uh, we will send this out with the uh, webinar, I think, that I'd heard on that. Uh, we'll be sending this out and it's pretty easy explained on this, a game of awareness, then you got uh, your skill levels, then your awareness of your um, own field communications, uh, stuff like that, uh, intangibles, uh, just, uh, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And that's, this helps us to determine what bracket you need to be in, whether it be a one, two or three bracket, or if we got even higher brackets than that, this would determine uh, pretty much um, that if it's filled out right. And that's the key to it all, just making sure you're honest with this on that. Um, and if you got a very high level team and, and you put down that your skill level is very basic and we see this and we know that you will be moved up to the higher division. I assure you that. Yes, and with that, um, if you're not on my distribution list, um, I sent out a unified uh, fall gains email pretty recently and it had this attached as well. Um, but just asking uh, something we're going to try because, of course, it'll be a little harder with the visioning, um, with the time frame that we have being a one day event for fall games this year. So we're trying to use this assessment just to see how it goes. It's going to be a little test uh, test this time around, but thought it was a pretty uh, straightforward uh, assessment and it's assessment of your entire team. So. Um, if you have any questions about it, uh, let me know. And again, if you're not on my distribution list, send me an email and I will make sure you're on it so you can receive everything that I send out. Okay, uh, the event uh, and base running the purpose to measure the athletes based on abilities. A description bases are set up, uh, set up like a baseball diamond position uh, 65 feet apart. The athlete uh, starts at home plate, runs around uh, the bases as fast as possible, possible touching each base in route, first, second, and third, and then home plate. Uh, the time route elapse a second and subtracted from 300 determined uh, your uh, position on that. 
so this is the older way we used to do this and and you tally up your points on this and uh, uh, we'll see where we stand at. Uh, like I said, this is the throwing. You have them try to throw in a straight line here as far as they can. Uh, we're looking for not only distance, but uh, the accurate of the throwing and uh, the player being tested stands behind a restraining line uh, back far enough to take. And uh, we will send this out also. And then we uh, measure that and we'll see how we do on that uh, without stepping over the restraining line. And fielding, uh, to measure the athlete's fielding ability, uh, the athlete will stand between uh, between and behind two cones. The official or the coach must throw the ball on the ground to the athlete between the cones. The throw to the athlete must hit the ground before the chalk, chalk mark. The athlete may move aggressively towards the ball. Each athlete gets five fielding attempts per trial. Each athlete receives two trials. All this does is gives us an idea of how well and where to position this player uh, the same way as a hitting. Uh, we're doing the measurement of the athlete's ability to hit from distance when hitting off a batting tee. Uh, it's going to be the same uh, standard batting box. The athlete instructed to hit the ball off the tee. The athlete re receives three at Attempts, okay, and if you're doing unified, you can do it the same way. If you want to do it, uh, you can use your partners the same way, guys. And I suggest you do that, and that gives us accurate uh, scoring on where we need to put you. Like Irvin said, it's going to be a one-day event. If we have 20 teams, we already got to get going and everything else. So this all just helps us out to some degree. Irvin. Thank you, my man. Thank you, Todd. And um, I just put my email address in the chat box. So if anyone needs to email me, please send, send me anything. Um, also, I think Todd's email was at the beginning. I will scroll back up there before we um, get out of here. But if there's any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach, uh, reach out to me. Um, for time purposes, I won't dive completely into the training and progression plan, but it's really just the steps to becoming a certified coach. Um, all you do is go to specialolympicsarkansas.org. You'll click on get involved. And then under the coaches tab, you'll see the coach training and progression plan. And that's where you'll find the entire plan of what you need to become certified. Um, as you can see right here, protective behaviors, uh, concussion training, uh, sports specific training, which you're doing today, and also a general orientation um, that is a one time deal. And for those who haven't taken it, we'll be offering that in two weeks. Um, and I'll send, show you those dates here in a second. But um, if you're, for those who are looking to become certified, if you haven't been yet, go to specialolympicsarkansas.org, get involved, and click on that coaches tab. And that's where you'll find that coaches training and progression plan. It's a little packet and it has step-by-step -step of what you need to do. And I'm pretty sure most of you have already knocked out most of the requirements already to become a certified coach. Um, so let me see, I thought I had a question. A certificate of completion, that's one thing I'm working on right now. Um, after this call, you guys should be getting a certificate here in the next few days or a link, I should say, to download your certificate from NIST training. Um, so you'll get that um, here in the next day or so. Um, so you'll definitely, that should be look from, looking for that in your email. Um, upcoming competitions, these are two that I have on here. Um, there is a regional unified softball tournament, October 23rd in Walnut Ridge. Um, I said spaces are limited um, because I know, um, I think Darisa is on the call. But um, Darisa will be one of the key contacts there. But let me know if you're interested. If she has spaces available, um, then we'll let you know for sure. But uh, just send an email over and we'll see. But the registrations there are due October 15th. 
um, and also Unified Sports Fall Games. Um, again, I sent out an email again today for those who are in my distribution list with in information on that. Um, but that'll be November 20th at UCA and uh, registrations and assessments are due by November 1st. So please uh, send me an email if you're interested, if you have not received that information yet. Uh, upcoming virtual trainings. Um, these are the two that we have for the rest of the month. Uh, bowling is next week, uh, Tuesday, uh, September 21st at 6 p.m. So same time, same place. Uh, general session and coaching 101, Tuesday, September 28th at 6 p.m. For those of you who are first time coaches and have not gone through the, gone through the general session, uh, it is a one time deal that you'll need to do. Uh, so please try to join us there. Um, I'll be sending out a, another link again, um, if you haven't received the link, but if you have, which I'm pretty sure if you're on this call, you have, but register for those other um, trainings as well, if you have not done so already. But other than that, um, if there are no more questions, oh, sorry, let me look. Uh, are you going to file the certificate or, or are we going to send, need to send it back to the office? Um, asking everyone to send them back to the office. I um, uh, know some people, uh, sometimes there may be multiple people on one account that are watching the video, so we don't have um, a way to really keep up with who I was watching um, accurately, I should say. So please uh, print out a copy or uh, save a copy on your computer and email it to me. I'm trying to put them in as they come to us. Um, so please send any certifications that you have for any of these virtual trainings or any other trainings, whether it's concussion or what have you that you're taking, please send those over to me as well so I can try to get them into the system. Um, but um, on this page, you can see my email and Jennifer's email if you have any questions at all or any suggestions for future sessions. Um, as I said, we are looking to confirm um, the next couple months of sessions all the way till February. So you'll see that here in the next week or so. Um, and that way you'll, we have a lot of sports sessions and a lot, a, a lot of trainings outside of sports specific things. Um, you can learn more about LETR, you can learn more about athlete safety, uh, things like that. So that's one thing we're trying to do and keep these virtual trainings going because they have been a hit and everyone is loving them right now. So um, does the website have the training scheduled after September or should we be on the lookout for those? Um, they are not on the calendar yet. Um, they should be, oh, I got you, Caleb, you said ignore it, but uh, we'll, we will have them um, out to everyone fairly soon. They should be confirmed by this week. But I think that is all I have. Um, give me a quick second. Uh, we'll go back up to the top real fast. Uh, this is Todd's email. I think everyone can still see it. Uh, if you have any questions for Todd, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know he'll definitely help you with anything that you guys need. But if there are no more questions, thank you all for joining us. And please tune into the next training, which is bowling, coming up next week. So see you all soon. And again, thank you, Todd. Oh, you're welcome, Mark. Really Thank y'all for attending. Everyone have a good night. Alicia said, great job, Todd. Desiree said, thanks. Ashley said, thanks. Thank you all. Thank y'all for joining us. I think it went good, guys. Thank y'all so much. Valerie said, you did a terrible job, Todd. No, I'm just As kidding. She said, she said, awesome job. <laughs> Jennifer, thanks for logging me on. Appreciate it. Jennifer ain't there no more ever. Uh, uh, she, no, she's still there, but. She just don't want to talk tonight, I see. Hey, bud, call me if you need me, as always. All right, see you next week, Desiree. See you, buddy. All right, y'all have a good one. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye.